everybody, Colin Sheehan here, back with Doubling Down with Colin Sheehan. I'm joined by my good friend at Trust the Prophets, Matthew DeSantis, at Fail to Menace on Twitter. We're getting later in the Saturday races, Matt. We are, and, and the competition keeps heating up, and the races keep getting more interesting. And I think we have a really exciting daily double here in these two races. One on the dirt, one on the turf. Should be a lot of fun. Yeah, we're jumping into race five and race six. Race five starts us off. It is the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. There is your field of 11. Where'd you go? Well, you know, you know where I went because you and I know each other pretty well. And you know that I have a pet in this particular race and my son simplification. Uh, okay. I think this is a horse that is absolutely a steal on the board right now. 15 to one. This is a horse ran its best race ever. You could argue at a mile, the mucho macho man back at Gulfstream, uh, back in the, in the spring. This is a horse that finished fourth at the Kentucky Derby, can absolutely handle two turns, but I love the cutback in distance. This is a horse that is so versatile, can be on the lead, can be stalking, can be mid-pack, can close, can make his own trip, make his own luck, always runs honest. I just think this is a horse that's primed for a huge effort here and can, like I said, from that inside rail, save some ground, is used to the two turns, which is a dynamic that some of these horses, which are more sprinters stretching out, haven't really done two turns. I know the favorite is a one in particular, Cody's Wish, not really a two turn type of horse. So I think simplification of 15 to one presents outstanding value. I just uh, took out the banner and I'm going to update it because on these big days, people have to recognize that horse racing, gambling, you want to be responsible and you want to also be social. And I love what we've been doing here on this channel. So I am updating the banner. And I'm bringing it in because I have just added simplification to my ticket. Because if simplification wins, right? If simplification <laughs> wins, I want to be able to have fun with that with you, who I know is going to be in Keeneland. And at 15 yep. to 1, when you, as soon as you said that, I said, you know what? I can't be teasing you so much about simplification. And then <laughs> simplification beats me like on a show like this. Like, we're here to have fun. <laughs> it's not a lot of money. I'm adding $2 to my ticket to make sure that I cover simplification just for you. All right. I love it. Too nice. You You're go. too nice. So me though, see if we can do some, uh, so you better have epicenter on your classic ticket. Here, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the trade off. That's the, that's fair. That's totally fair. Uh, I have, uh, slowly gro grown so fond of a horse who at the beginning of this year, I really was down on. I loved beating him, uh, in the comp stakes with call me midnight. He was a favorite, the under even money favorite. And that was cyber knife mm -hmm. and cyber knife. If you go back, I mean, throw out the Derby. I always just toss that race, except for Epicenter, who kicked ass in it. <laughs> what do you call it? Selective hearing on stats or whatever? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, only Epicenter's Derby run matters. Okay? Yeah, that's the one that matters. Everybody else is crap. Yeah, yeah, so. Everyone else puts a line through it. And we're going to take out Cyberknife's line through his Kentucky Derby. Comes back, wins a mat win in a grade three race. After that, performs and wins at the Haskell, another grade one race at almost eight to one. Finishes second behind Epicenter in the Travers, then loses to Taba and Zandon in the Pennsylvania Derby. If Taba was in this race, obviously a different length, but mm -hmm. I think Taba is is clear, right? Ab above above this field. No? Taba Taba's like three to five if, if he's in this <laughs> race. Yeah. He's he's the huge favorite. And uh yeah, I I, I hear your logic on that. I like Cyberknife a lot. Um I just think the outside post position might not be super favorable. That's it on dirt routes. That's not been great at Keeneland necessarily that outside post. Um, and you know, it's just more of a gut feel. I don't know if that horse wanted to, I don't know if Brad Cox really wanted to take that horse to the Pennsylvania Derby. That felt more like an owner's decision and the horse just seemed a little tired. And so I'm just wondering how he's going to bounce back. I do like the distance cut back quite a bit for him though, in this spot. I mean, if he's tired, he just went out and put a 59 flat on the board, uh, October 29th, the first out of 71 in the work. So, uh, hope he can run, he can yeah, run. There's no doubt. And I think in the class here, I think the class relief is going to be uh, mm -hmm. right up cyber knife Sally at nine to two. I feel like that's another one of these bets or the prices that I just can't ignore. I can't let cyber knife beat me. Uh, now I can't let simplification beat me. So my you know what? More expensive. Throw a nine Throw on, on my card as well. Throw a nine on. <laughs> <laughs> Add two dollars. What the hell? Yeah. I'm not letting Cyberknife beat go. me Ready either. So while I edit it, you can talk about. Uh, yeah, I'll talk about Laurel River. This is the Bob Baffert horse, uh, and I know uh, you know California horses have not particularly done well at the Keeneland uh, Breeders' Cup, 
But Laurel River, again, kind of fits this profile of a horse I like. Young, ascending speed figure figures, get, keeps getting better. And this is also a horse that just for a variety of reasons has not really been able to string three, four races in a row together, has always had a little bit of a layoff. And now you're seeing this horse when it's able to string together three, four races has really run well. Also has won at a two turn dirt mile twice. So I like that a lot that it's used to this track configuration. Whereas a, a horse like Cody's wish five for five winning at a mile, all one turn miles though. So I, I think that's a consideration to make uh, when looking at this field. Yeah, I passed on uh, Cody's wish as well. And you're going to make fun of me for this pick. Uh, the one, slow down Andy at 30 to 1. All right? <laughs> Hear me out. Hear me out. <laughs> Cutting back in distance after being within a length in his last, last six races, including a grade one, a grade two, and a grade three, only half a length behind country grammar in his last. He's had three very solid works at Keeneland. Hit a 101 Brisnet last year, then was put to rest. The last race he ran in had 100 Brisnet speed figure. He's not getting the rest. They're going to try him again. And if he take that next step up, that next bump up, uh, I'm just hoping at 30 to one, uh, this, oh, look, this is kind of just a crazy play for me. I'm not going to sit here and, and try to tell everyone that slow down Andy, but I 30 to one on a horse that is cutting back in distance. It's just the angle yeah. I love. He's, he's always within the stretch. So yeah, not getting there, but the cut back, the yang cut back the distance. Maybe that's what allows him to, to get it done. I don't think he wins, but I think 30 to one is a crazy price on him. He, he's much better than 30 to one. And if I was playing verticals, he would absolutely be included in my exotics uh, in, in this race because he's going to add a ton of value. And, I, you know, he I, I joked with you before we started recording. He runs like a drunken sailor. I mean, he does run like he's all over the place. I mean, I'll never forget that, uh, you know, the, the race when he was uh, on the Derby Trail at Los Alamitos, where he was just like staring at the grandstand while running past the other horses. And so he was he's a character and, and I, I like him. He's got a quirky personality. I, I do like Doug O'Neill quite a bit as a trainer. So uh, 30 to one, though, you're, you're getting a really, really good price on a good horse. I decided to include include the five. Good night. Seven to two. Last four have been pretty solid. They're all 100-plus Brisnet speed figures. Uh, they were at seven uh, furlongs, though. He had one race at a mile last year, but it was his worst on the paper. I've mm -hmm. kind of gone back and forth on Gunite. You don't have him on yours. How come? It kind of He's just stuck in the middle. I, I feel bad for him. If this was the distance of the Philly and Mare, tour, or Philly and Mare sprint, he would absolutely be on my tickets. He's a great seven furlong horse. He's not quite fast enough to run in the sprint. Asmussen also probably does not want him hindering Jackie's warrior on the front end uh, because I think if he was in the sprint, that's what he would be doing. Um, but he's a, he's a really, really nice horse. I like gun. so much. Uh, just so impressive. Another great gun runner, but just don't think this trip really works for him. I think a mile. And the, the funny part about this, even though it's a dirt mile, they're actually running like a mile and 70 yards. There's actually like a 70 yard run up. Uh, and so it's a little longer than a mile actually. Now that might not mean much, but Horses are still running an extra 70 yards, and, and it's just, like I said, it's slightly different configuration than a lot of them have faced before. Well, you just stole the thunder for Slow Down Andy, who I was hoping was cutting back in distance, so thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> but he's run he's run at some big races, so I, I, I still like Slow Down Andy. We move on to the race six, Philly. Phillies and Mare, just for uh, Matt, the Phillies, big Phillies fan, who's <laughs> doing well. We got the Philly and Mare turf, a mile and 316th, and I'll be honest, I relied on a lot of the content that you have put out about the Euros because I'm not, mm. I'm hardly as in touch with the American side, never mind the European side. So uh, thank you for everything that you've done for that. And here we have this three Nashua for a trainer that you've told me to be aware of. Uh, Holly Doyle is someone that we've all heard of. She's crashed onto the scene and is such a great uh, personality for this sport and to see and hear. Uh, Nashua is someone that's shown ability to handle different grounds, both good and soft. Um, I've seen some versatility in the running style, two wins at this distance. For me, this is the one race I've kind of landed on all the Euros. This is that one race where I think that they're probably going to take it home. Uh, so I stuck right in the middle there with the three, four, five. But what do you think about Nashua? Nashua is uh, such a good, such a good filly. Uh, John Gosden and, and his son, Thaddy Gosden, are tremendous trainers. And uh, I think North American audiences are obviously more familiar with Aiden O'Brien and Charlie Appleby. John Gosden's got an operation and a half over there. He's got some of the best European horses, full stop. So uh, bringing over Nashua, who last time out finished second in a 16 horse field over extremely, I mean, calling that soft at Longchamp was generous. I mean, that was just running around in a swamp. And so it, that was, 
you know, the fact that she still showed the ability as the favorite to beat 15 other horses, basically, or, or 14 other horses and just lose by less than a length before that racked up two consecutive group one wins, second off a layoff. There's a lot to like. I think she fires a big one here. Holly Doyle, like you said, great rider. Um, I, I skipped the Joseph O'Brien horse, but I know we both like the the five Tuesday, the Aiden O'Brien horse. This is one where I think the last two times out, you can just totally toss the soft turf, does not like it. The weather for Saturday looks good in Keeneland, should get firm turf to run on. Uh, that's ideal for Tuesday. And if you remember, this was a horse that had won the Epsom Oaks over Nashua, then goes and runs against the boys in the Irish Derby, finishes fourth, but then comes right back in the Yorkshire Oaks and finishes second, but then loses to Alpinista, who's the eventual arc winner. So had been keeping phenomenal company. And like I said, the last two times out, soft ground, toss them, draw a line through it. I think at eight to one, that's a gift. Really big fan of Tuesday in this rise. It's important to note too, that Tuesday was born in June. Mm -hmm. So that's really late compared to uh, others horses. You know, usually you see the January, February, March, April, May, this horse has kind of always been behind. So to be doing that uh, with yeah. a little bit shorter of development, this horse has a closing kick. Um, and I really hope that that closing kick uh, is what puts two. It's also a great name, right? Some great yeah. horse names. Uh, you got Tuesday, Toy, and Broom. Uh, it's like <laughs> yeah. so simple and cool. <laughs> yeah. Not only are the Europeans better at turf, they're also better at naming their horses, apparently, <laughs> than, than we are. Uh, would you consider Nashua your best bet in this race? Absolutely. Yes. Uh, this, I know it's very chalky, but this feels like almost a, a sure thing. I am absolutely fading the Chad Brown horses in the spot. Um, I, I know Americans are obviously I might be outraged over this, but, uh, I, I just see, uh, in Italian as a horse that maybe the clock strike 12 and might turn into a pumpkin here. I think she's going to get more challenge on the front end and she's going to have a better group running after on the back end. Don't think she's going to be able to do what she's been doing to this point. And speaking of, is it your best bet? Don't forget to help out uh, our new sponsors who gave us some new swag, Play Up Racebook. Uh, they're giving you a great offer right now. If you deposit $500, they're going to match 50% of that. So they will give you $250. Deposit before the Breeders' Cup $100, and you get another free $25 bet. We love our sponsors. We thank you so much. Uh, race up, uh, Play Up Racebook as certainly a, a book for the players to be paying attention to. The other horse I went with is the four. Above the curve, mm -hmm. this horse is huge. It's an American <laughs> American Pharaoh filly, yeah. really big. He's managed the turns. You'd think with the size that he'd have problems. Uh, that's why I expected to see this horse have only run straight, but they uh, yeah. she did run the uh, some turns over at Chester mm -hmm. and finished second by a neck to Nashua. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, she finished third. Nashua was second, but it was only a neck. Um, Ryan Moore actually decided to ride above the curve over Tuesday a couple races back, if that's worth anything. Mm -hmm. um, and now you're adding Hall of Famer John Velasquez. Um, so mm -hmm. I'd be remiss if I uh, left above the curve off my ticket. So I did continue uh, to use the three, four, and the five in this race. Matt went with the three and the five. Thanks so much for doing this, Matt. Yeah, my pleasure. This has been a lot of fun, and hopefully we cash a couple of these tickets and have some fun doing it. And you enjoy Keeneland. You're on your way there now as this show gets released. <laughs> uh, so a reminder, this is for Saturday's Breeders' Cup Race 5 and Race 6. I went 1, and I added my 2, 5, 9. So you got to make sure you check the updated standings here. 1, 2, 5, 9 with the 3, 4, 5. It only cost you $12. Matt went two six nine. He made the smart decision uh, <laughs> of adding uh, who was I forget Cyberknife. Was Cyberknife, that's right. Um, and then went three five in the second leg here for a six dollar ticket. We are common bets for the common man. You're not breaking the bank here, and you can't yell at me if you don't hit your tickets. That's why I keep them cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Trust the Profits Breeders' Cup coverage is brought to you by Play Up Racebook, the most horse player friendly racebook in the industry. Play Up Racebook is always your best bet.